Hi, I'm Coco. And I'm Ashland. And we're with the Santa Barbara Middle School Team Press here with... I'm Rachel Winter. I produce Dallas Buyers Club. It's nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. <laughs> so how did you come to make the Dallas Buyers Club? I got involved with Dallas Buyers Club five years ago and uh, my partner Robbie Brenner and I we got together and it was um, Matthew McConaughey was already attached to the movie and we set about to get financing and uh, get a director Jean-Marc Vallée ultimately came on to direct the movie even from that point we had 137 people pass on the movie and say no um, and then 12 months before we were set to shoot the movie this was in 2012 uh, eight weeks before shooting, our financing fell apart, and then we had eight weeks to put it back together, and everybody worked together and um, just would not take no for an answer. We did get the money, and we shot the movie in 25 days for under $5 million. Okay. <laughs> um, how did your film get started? Um, so the script was actually written 20 years ago by Craig Borton and then he brought on a partner Melissa Wallach and in 2001 uh, it was set up at Universal. Uh, Mark Forrester and Brad Pitt were attached. Other directors and other actors had been attached before that. Eight years later the movie still had not gotten made um, and then in 2009 when the script reverted to the writers there's a for the WGA there's a clause a reversion clause in the the writers ultimately get their script back and in 2009 Robbie said all right let's let's try again let's make the movie and at that point sent it to Matthew McConaughey and he was attached and from that point five years later I'm sitting here with you guys <laughs> so how long did it actually take to like make the Start whole film yeah. uh, shoot the movie or from from, from the beginning the beginning the 22 years um, so how does the Dallas Buyers Club touch you personally? Um, my uh, uncle ha was on AZT and died of AIDS right around the time that Ron Woodruff died. Um, so it was a very personal story for me, something that I really wanted to be involved with. And I feel like young people today in particular need to know that um, this was at one point certainly um, you know, other than polio, the biggest epidemic to ever sweep our country and the mayhem and chaos that a lot of people in this country endured trying to figure out what to do about this pretty horrible disease. So that still affects so many people all over the world. So you say you wanted to try and inform young people about HIV AIDS. It wasn't, Dallas Buyers Club is not exactly the most, it's more mature than yeah, for young people our age. but. Are you still trying to inform young people or is that just like one of the goals you had? I think that a, a film like this, it's a great byproduct that uh, it's in the general sense, it's just an inspirational movie. Maybe that the message is, you know, fight for what you believe in and, you know, ask, ask the question of an audience, what are you made of? What would you do if you were in a situation like this? So maybe HIV and, and, and the AIDS struggle is more representative of other things that maybe are more applicable to a young audience. Can you tell us why Jared Leto plays the female part? Um, well, he plays, um, he plays, a, he's transgender, so he's, yeah. you know, um, and so we actually refer to Rayon as a she, and uh, I think Jared Leto, Jared Leto did an unbelievable job playing her. Um, I think with a character like that, it's easy for something like that to become a caricature or a character that's not, you know, that you can't really throw your arms around, but I think Rayon has ended up being a very beloved, wonderful character and an, and a, an incredible counterpart to Matthew's Ron Woodruff. Thank you. You're welcome. Please tell us about your current film, Stealing Cars. We see it's in post-production. What does that mean and what is your job during this stage of making the film? Um, so Stealing Cars also took 13 years to get made. Wow. Um, <laughs> That was, aren't you? Yeah, thank you very much. Yes, I am. And when you believe in something, you should you should not give up. And if you're passionate about something, um, it's a great story. It's also inspired by true events. It's targeted also toward uh, young people. Uh, well, not also. Dallas Buyers Club is obviously, as you said, for a more yeah. mature audience. But um, 
this should be a PG-13 movie. And we are in post-production, which means um, the editor and the director are very hard at work. They're, we are in the phase known as the director's cut. And so he will, Bradley will take his, his turn taking a pass, shaping the film into a 90 minute movie that he feels like this is representative of his original vision. At that point, we will work together to add music and score and, and round out the film. Um, and, you know, hopefully we'll be done in around April. And how is that different from when filming is happening? Uh, when filming is happening, the you know what's happening uh, on set, for example, that is just cameras rolling, crew. You know, it depends. The the budget will determine the size of your crew, but everybody working together to uh, respect the script, which is really like um, you know the architectural plans. If you're building a house, your script. Yeah. These are your architectural plans. We're all building a house together, and uh, actors, crew, director, producers and trying to make that vision come to life. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, so you. Much. It was nice to meet A you. A pleasure to meet nice you guys. To you Good luck. Thank, Thank you. you.